Hey, good morning. Welcome back to Morning Devotions or Daily Devotions. Whenever you um, watch this, I'm really glad that you're here. Today we're going to be in the Gospel of Luke chapter 14. It's really only two sections, but they are very powerful. And so just to give you some context for the first part of it, Jesus is actually sitting in the house of the Pharisee, and he gives some, some instructions that we can apply to our lives today. So here we go. And it came to pass as he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day, that they watched him. And behold, there was a certain man before him which had the dropsy. And Jesus answered and spake to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? Oh, here we go again, healing on the Sabbath day. And they held their peace. They stayed silent. And he took him and healed him and let him go. And he answered them, saying, Which of you shall have a donkey or an ox fall in the ditch? And he will not straight would pull him out on the Sabbath day. And they could not answer him again to these things. And he put forth a parable to those that were bidden or that were called, invited to this party. And when he marked how they chose out the chief room, saying unto them, When thou art invited of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest any honorable man that thou be bidden to him, lest a more honorable man show up, and he's called to the highest room. He then that bade thee, and him that come, and say to, the, say to you, give this man your place, and you, being with, being with shame, have to take the lowest room. But when you are called, go and sit down in the lowest room, that whenever he that called you comes, he can say to you, friend, go up higher. Then shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that sit with me, with thee. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he who humbleth himself shall be exalted. Then said he also to the one that called him, When, so G, when thou makest a dinner for other supper, call not your friends, nor your brethren, nor your kinsmen, nor your rich neighbors, lest they also call thee, and the recompense be made by them. But when thou makest a feast called the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense you, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. And when one of them sat at meat, heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is he that shall eat in the kingdom of God. And he said, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, or he called many. He invited many, and sent his servant at the supper time to say to them that were called, Come. For all things are now ready. And they all, with one consent, began to make an excuse. The first one said, I bought a piece of ground, and I need to go see to it. And I pray thee that I'm excused. Another said, I bought five yokes of oxen, and I have to go prove them. I pray you, please excuse me. And another said, I've married a wife, and I can't come. So the servant came and showed his Lord these things, and the master of the house was angry and said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city, and bring in the poor, the maimed, the halt, the blind. And he said, and the servant said, Lord, it's done as you've commanded. There's still room. And the Lord said to his servant, Go to the highways and the hedges, and compel them to come in my house, that it may be full. For I say to you, none of these men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. So Jesus seems to discern the purpose of the Pharisees when he said, is it lawful to heal the Sabbath day or not? They refused to answer because they knew that acts of mercy were allowed. Jesus healed the one that was in pain and sent them on their way. He then exp explained his action by reminding them that if they had a son that they loved or an ox that they deemed valuable fall into a ditch, they would rescue it. Even though this, was involved, this would involve labor, which was forbidden, forbidden on the Sabbath. Here's an interesting point. They were eating food. They were at a banquet on the Sabbath, so it's, which was work. So go figure. Having given instructions concerning the true nature of the Sabbath, Jesus then offers a lesson in humility. The practice was well known to promote, promote oneself at the feast. The most honor of the guest, the closer the guest sat next to the host. Think of a really long table. Host is up here. Honored guest up here. Less honored guest down here. Um, the closer you sat to the host, and they would vie for that seat next to the host. Jesus suggested that when you go to a feast, automatically take the lowest seat. If the host wants you to have a better seat, he'll ask you. The one who honors himself will not be honored, but the one who the host honors is truly honored. Jesus then gives a word of instruction concerning respecting others. The Pharisees 
had, who had invited their friends could expect to be rewarded with invitations to their homes. He was using this banquet then as a means of offering himself to others to heap the benefit in return. Jesus thought that they should invite those who have nothing to return. Those who invite friends will receive their reward from their friends. Those who invite people that cannot repay receive their reward from God. The reward was true righteousness. The Pharisees responded, blessed is the man who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God, thinking all of Israel will be included in the future. Jesus then gives the parable of the great feast, alluding to the future kingdom. Well-known social customs of the day provided the basis for this parable. Insomuch as an elaborate and costly preparations were involved in putting on a banquet, invitations would extend to the guest well in advance. The, blood, the banquet would be made ready. The master would send a servant to those who accepted the invitation and let them know, hey, the time has come. In his parable, Jesus said the invitation had been extended to the nation. They said they were ready for the Messiah. The invitation was given by Old Testament prophets. However, in the parable, they began to make excuses. One bought a field, one got married, one was working, we just can't come, it's not time yet, it's not a good moment. Thus, those that had been invited and had indicated their expectation to attend the banquet, when it was prepared, were not ready to make the sacrifices involved, so they declined the invitation. Their rejection of the invitation revealed their lack of respect of the host. Since the banquet had been prepared, the master then sent servants to some of the, the that considered themselves unworthy, the poor, the blind, the crippled, and the maimed, and many of them came. During his ministry, Jesus welcomed sinners and tax collectors to follow him. They did not come because they were worthy. They came because they were welcome. They did not come because they were worthy. They came because they were welcome. But there was still room in the house. The servants were sent out again, this time representing the Gentiles and those, those of the non-Jewish community. The many, many Gentile nations came and they filled the house that Jesus was the host of. Jesus concluded by saying that the nation of Israel had been invited, but they rejected his invitation. And thus they would be excluded from the kingdom. It was not the invitation that guaranteed blessing, but it's the response to the invitation. How will you respond to Jesus' invitation? And there went out a great multitude with him and turned, and they said to him, If any man come to me and hate not his father, his mother, his wife, his children, his brother, and his sisters, yea, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me, he cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, said down first, not down first and count the cost, whether it's yeah, sufficient to finish it? Lest happily after he had laid the foundation, not able to finish it, all that beheld it began to mock him, saying, This man began to build, but could not finish. Or what king goes to make war against another king, sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand? Or else, while the other yet is a great far off, he sendeth uh, a messenger and desireth conditions of peace? So likewise, whosoever be he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if salt lost his savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? For it is neither fit for the land nor the dunk hill, but man cast it out. He that hath the ears, let him hear. In these two small but wonderful parables, Jesus speaks about planning and preparation. He teaches us to count the cost before taking action. He applauds evaluation and encourages damage prevention through preparation and negotiation. He encourages us to count the cost and calculations. Doing this is not a lack of, lack of faith, but foresight based on insight and hindsight. It's competence, really. Competence requires three things. Number one, commitment. Jesus said our commitment to him must look like disdain for everything else. We must pick up our cross and follow him. Resources. Jesus spoke about the builders calculating whether they had enough to finish the tower. Determine your resources, your gifts, your talents, your ability to finish the job. And then number three, intelligence. Jesus spoke about a king seeking counsel, what he, whether he should go to battle. Because part of competence is insight on knowing what, knowing what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Jesus gave himself wholly to his cause and to his people. Consequently, he would ask them to do the same. Because whenever a leader, whenever we vote with our lives, people will gain all kinds of security. Jesus' call for commitment both screened the uncommitted and attracted the committed. 
So that is today's Bible lesson for today. Hope that you enjoyed it. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.